Praise the Lord, everybody. Mm. Sound like someone didn't finish paying for tuition. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? amen. You know, we are in the house of the Lord, amen? amen. This is not just a baccalaureate or a graduation, so to speak, but we're all looking to graduate from this earth, amen? amen. <laughs> Some with high honors. Some with just made it through. So all those who are just making it through, let me hear you say amen. amen. Yes, yes. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Pastor Tap, thank you for the opportunity of just being here. And to the senior class, 2019, let me just simply share. Um, Ian, would you stand for a second? Where's Ian? I, I, I love this class because I have... Um, I was with them from the time they were freshmen, freshman 101. And so Ian was the one that turned off the projectors for me because I couldn't reach it. <laughs> Thank you, Ian, appreciate it. <laughs> then, you know, you, you look at all these guys, you know, you look at all the guys and you wonder what they're gonna be in four years and you look at guys like Robbie, please, Robbie, stand. Please, Robbie, stand. Now, <laughs> there's a giant in the land, yes. When you look at Robbie, you wonder to yourself, my goodness, you know, did you stop growing yet? You know what I mean? I'm so glad of your um, decision to uh, go to the best school. I'm sorry, the school that you've chosen. You know, I just want to thank you for, oh, Ian, you chose that school too, didn't you? Oh, just stand, please, just stand. Amen, amen. I mean, any other person chose a school down in... Huntsville, Alabama, just stand. Oh, let me just see. Oh, amen, amen. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Please be seated because I don't have any money for you. Amen. So, Father, as we look at this word, we're asking for your Holy Spirit to be with us, for your Holy Spirit to bless and to guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Just want you to know that my second favorite school well, really, it's my first, but my second favorite school is Washington Adventist University. The reason why I say my second is because I didn't go there. But Washington Adventist University, for those who may not know, we need to put our money where our mouth is. Too often, when you see things seem to be going down the drain, you bail. Stop bailing. So I'm going to say this before we begin. Too often, when our institutions look a certain way, we bail. I'm so glad that Tacoma Academy doesn't look like you're bailing. For those who may not understand that statement. Tacoma Academy is a school that I've gone to for the past 10 years. Since I've come here and I started Restoration Praise Center, stay with me, and I started Restoration Praise Center, of course, with the Lord's help, I didn't have a job in the first year. In other words, they allowed me to pastor the church without being picked up yet, sort of to prove yourself. But Brother Dunbar, or Pastor Dunbar, uh, Henry, gave me the opportunity at the time when he was the principal there, and he allowed me to come in and teach to make a little bit of money on the side. Since then, I became attached to Tacoma Academy. And when I mean attached to Tacoma, to, to Tacoma Academy, I love the school with a passion. And I believe that is one of the greatest academies in North America. Not only that, for those who may not know, it is one of the highest percentage of school that graduates, graduates into high school, I mean, into college. And I just want to pause for a second. For all those who teach there, all those who send their children there, all those who still contribute, though your children are not there, I ask for a double blessing on your life. And all the tuition that your parents have been paying for you to go there, it is an investment, it's not a bill. In light of that, I want to share something with you. I want to make sure that we look at the time because this is not my church. <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on the time. I think I have about 30 minutes and I took away three already. Some may understand this when I say this, that I'm very grateful to my parents, 
And so I want to start this talk with you to have you realize that somebody paid for you to go to school. Somebody took money out of their pockets for you to go to school. And it's not when, like when we were growing up, I'm talking to you all, not like when we were growing up when we had to take four buses to school, three buses to school, but you get, most of you guys get dropped off. Yeah. Parents, dropped off. My parents used to walk to school. You know, we only find that out when they get mad. You know how long I to walk to school to go ahead. <laughs> so now you know where my parents come from. <laughs> Back then, we don't have no running water. You know what I'm talking about. It's amazing that you guys have so much, so much. And, and, and what's so amazing about you guys is that you have someone who sent you. There's a letter I want to share with everyone, a letter I want to share with everyone. If you look at this, um, this was a letter that was found in my parents in the house. It says, Dear Mr. Graham, and that's not me. It says, this letter is to confirm reservations made for your son, Paul, his admission to the Orthopedic Institute Hospital for Joint Disease. This is on July 5th, 1981. When you look at it, it says, studies have been scheduled for July 6th, a CAT scan, a monogram, an IVP for July 7th. Sorry. And if surgery is indicated, it will be done on July 9th. I didn't even get messed up like this, wow. And then I looked at the price on it because I just saw it last week for the first time. Prior to surgery, Dr. Blank, our dear, has been asked to check your son's medical condition to make sure he's in good enough state of general health for surgery and anesthesia. The fee for this surgical procedure is $4,000. Initial payment of one third of the fee is due on admission, which means my parents had to come up with one third of this in order for me to go on the table. And I don't know if my parents remember this, but I was 11 years old. Oh man, I told them I was 11, so that means they're gonna go with the, the age, all right. <laughs> and I remember being wheeled, listen, wheeled to the operating room. I turned to my mom and my dad, and I said to them, don't worry. If I don't make it, I'll see you in heaven. And I can see the lights above me while they were moving me, and I said, at 11 years old, if you get me out of this, God, I'm going to be a pastor. <laughs> At 11 years old, it was my dream that when my eyes woke up, when my eyes woke up, straight Jamaican, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I woke up out of the anesthesia and I saw my parents, I remembered that I promised God that when you take me out of this, my dream is to be obedient to you and become a pastor. I want you to understand that today I'm living my dream. Now, I know some of you are saying, but you're not a doctor. I'm a pastor. You're not a so-and-so. I'm a pastor. It was my dream from the time that I was 11 years old to be a pastor. I never wanted to be anything else but a pastor. That's it. And sometimes because you are members, you think, listen, you think that being a pastor is beneath you. And I want you to understand that sometimes I wish we could all move to the deep south where everyone loves pastors. Or sometimes I wish we can go to like the West Indies and be a pastor there. It's amazing. You, when you walk out, it's like they throw petals. <laughs> so as I, I wanted to share with you that this is a special day for you and a special day for me. Let me tell you why. There's a, there's a picture I want to show you that for my first time that I ever preached, I was 15 years old. If you notice, listen closely, if you notice, there's a timepiece there. I never learned. I preached for an hour. <laughs> I had hair. And the skinny ties are back in. Does anybody know the skinny ties are back in? This is my first sermon, 15 years old. 
And at that time, they never allowed young people to be on the pulpit. And a preacher gave me an opportunity to preach at 15. And since that day, that's all I've been doing is preaching. I even got my wife by preaching, yo! (laughs) Then I want to share with you that the other day I went through some boxes and I found a cassette tape. If you look at the cassette tape, the date is 619, but the year is 1999. 20 years to this month, I'll be preaching the same sermon I preached 20 years ago. The same sermon that someone preached to me in 1984, I said 1884, in 1984. (laughs) Behold the dreamer. Now, I know this seems foreign to you guys because that plastic thing has holes in it. That plastic things have hold. Do you know what that is? Well, you know what that is? What is it? It's a cassette tape. Okay, let me hear some amens for it. Hold us pause. Anyone remember that if you are one of the era of eight track tapes, let me hear you say amen. amen. <laughs> wow, there's an old church here. <laughs> the age of the Walkman. The age of the Walkman cassette tapes. Let me hear you say amen. The age of the CD players, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Wow, it's getting loud now, boy. And now the age of, download that. This is the age that if you played this too long, it'll pop your tape. Anybody remember putting pencils in it and just rolling it? Come on, look at them, look at them. We don't know what you're talking about. This is not part of the sermon, but anyone used to listen to your, um, your music and you put it in there and when your song came on, you press record? These guys just be like, Siri, play Cardi B. <laughs> this word comes from Genesis chapter 37. In th- Somebody said something over here. That was you. It was her. What'd you say? I'm watching you. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan, in the land of where everybody? These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17, (laughs) he was 17 years old and was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilal and with the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, I know we like to talk about Joseph and how great he became, but I need you to know that Joseph was a tattletaler. He talked too much. And I want you to understand that even though he always brought a bad report, to make it worse, he was his father's favorite. When we look at this, The word clearly tells us that he was the kind of guy that brought information back to his father. Now, I know what it's like to be the one that's the most important in the house. I know what it's like to be the favorite. My twin brother would say he's the favorite. My older brother would say he's the favorite but I want them to know that I am the favorite. My mother told me one time, do you know that you're the strongest child in the house? And, 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 and I used to believe it. Then I saw my twin brother who's taller than me, and stronger than me. And I went back to her and I said, mom, something's wrong. And then I looked at my older brother who's six feet. And I said, well, he's stronger than me. And I went back to my mom and said, how could you say I'm the strongest one in the house? She said, you're the strongest one in the house. I said, that's right. I'm the strongest one in the house. (laughs) And so Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Stay with me. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father 
loved him more than his brethren. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. When I read this, I understood, I understood what haters were all about. I understand that there's some people that will hate you just because others like you. There's others that will hate you simply because you're better than them. I don't know about this society, but when I was growing up, there was one winner. In this society, there was one winner. Now every, everyone wants to take care of everybody's feelings. Everyone runs across the finish line. The last person that goes over you go, we're going to give you an award too. You know, let me tell you something. I don't know about no award coming in last. You're first. And if you're second, you fight to be first. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I need you to understand that too often people hate you because of who you are and what you have and what you will become. I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to you. And the Bible says, and Joseph dreamed a dream and told his brethren, and they hated him even more. And here it is that he's telling them that he's telling them that my sheaves, listen, my sheaves are going to come, it's going to come and bow down to me. Your sheaves are going to come and bow down to me. And when he told his brothers, his brother said, are you saying to me that one day we are going to bow to you? But you notice that Joseph never said yes. He just left it where it was. Then he went back and had another dream, and I know you understand the dream, but the Bible says that he had a dream, and he now says that the, the sun and the moon will bow down to me, and all the stars will do the same. And his father says to him, you've got to be out your mind. Are you trying to tell me that your mother and myself and your brothers are going to bow down to you one day? This has this got to be crazy. But the Bible says that they hated him even more now that he had the dream. Now, let me tell you something. I don't mind when people hate me. In fact, I love it. Love when people hate me. Because when people love you, you don't know if they're being real. If you hate me, I know exactly where you are. Can't stand you, Graham. I know how you feel. Oh, I love you, Graham. Which knife you got? But the Bible is telling us that the father has a conversation with him. Stay with me. And says to him, I need you to go out and check on your brothers. Checking on your brothers simply means see if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because they never do what they're supposed to be doing. Stay with me. So go ahead and check on your brothers. The Bible says that as he goes, he reaches a field and he sees a man and the man asks him the question, what are you looking for? Now I want to pause on that for a second because I'm going to ask you some questions. The question is, as you graduate, as you leave from this place, what are you looking for? Because whatever you're looking for, you're going to find it. Mm. I want to be clear. When you go to college, when you leave this place, and you're on your own, you have to ask yourself the question, what are you looking for? Because even though you go to a Christian school, you can find the worst there. Oh, I'm safe. I'm going to Andrews. No, you're safely cold. <laughs> I want you to understand that you can go to the greatest Adventist schools if you are not covered by the Holy Spirit. You're walking with a public school mind. I ain't scared of y'all. The Bible says that he leaves, and when he leaves, he goes... <laughs> And the person is asking him, what are you looking for? He says, I'm looking for my brothers. And the person says, I heard them say that they were going over to Dothan. And he leaves and go to Dothan. I want you to picture this in your mind. Make the movie in your mind. Stay with me. The Bible says that when the brothers saw him coming, they said, behold, the dreamers. Behold, look, the dreamer is coming. And I want you to understand that when people see that you're elevating and they can't or won't, they call you just a dreamer. But I need you to know that if you're dreaming, 
something great in your life. With God at the helm of that, your dream will become a reality. Listen, let me, let me give you an example. You're, you've got to be that new person. You've got to be that new person, that new life. Show them for a second. When I mean by a new life, I'm talking about the fact that if you don't, if you want a new life, you got to get rid of the old one. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. Hey, let me give you an example. Please, let me give you an example. Um, I graduated from this school, great school, one point, I graduated low, average. <laughs> very low, very low, very low. But what frightened me was that in my last year of college, someone heard me preach and called me to New York to pastor even before I came out of school. You know, like I was the LeBron James of Northeastern. <laughs> I was the, um, come on, come up with a name, before, before college, high school phenoms. High school phenoms, what? Oh man, I was that guy. Now let me tell you what's scary about being young and stupid. Being young and stupid is coming out and working and you don't even know how to manage money. Please, let, let, me, let me share with you. Uh, Brother Watson, just, just wave, just wave. Brother Watson there, he's, he, I'm a little nervous because he's here. I was 23 years old, and I was a pastor of a church at 23 years old, and he was my first, first elder. He's the first, first elder I've ever had. So uh, this man used to talk to me like I was his son. I mean, when you do bad, Graham, come here. I ain't, my, uh, ain't I the pastor? <laughs> you know, you didn't call a meeting the other day. Well, I didn't really want to come call the meeting, call the meeting, call the meeting. I mean, everything. Sometimes, listen, sometimes we may not like for people to show us a certain way when we need people to show us a certain way. I was having a hard time in board meeting one time, 24 years old. And I was getting upset, and I remember him saying, you take a deep breath. Okay, let me say how he said, you take a deep breath. <laughs> and you go outside, you breathe, and you'll come back in. Never let them see you sweat like that. And boy, from then on, I did better 10 years later. So what I want you to know <laughs> is that it's important to listen and when I came out of college, listen, when I came out of college, I recognized that in order for me to do what I needed to do and be successful, it was important for me to get rid of the old guy. Getting rid of the old guy, listen, means getting rid of some friends. If, if, if you want to be successful and you want to be that new person, you got to get rid of old friends, old habits, old stuff, old TV. Come on now. Now, let me give you an example. One thing I learned at Oakwood University, one thing I learned is how to play spades. Talk to me now. When I used to play spades, man, I used to stay up all night long. Play spades all night long, and I want to share something with you. And when I play spades all night long, I recognized that everyone was getting A's who I was playing spades with. I couldn't figure out that while we were up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning spitting on the cars and throwing it, these guys, when I went to sleep, was up studying. Amazing that if I'm going to change my habit, or cha change my ways, I had to change my habit. And I want you to understand something, that one of the reasons why I had to do that is because I, if I'm going to believe in my dream, I've got to work what I'm dreaming. Amen. Now, listen, Pastor Tapp was one of the pastors in Northeastern Conference. He, he spoke very well. He's really good with communication. But the problem is that I don't have his voice. If I had Pastor Tapp's voice, when I was single. <laughs> what a voice, man. Man, I would be like, hey, wait, <clears throat> hey, <clears throat> hey. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. You ever hear this man's voice? Just when he prays, you'll be like, shh, 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 he about to pray.
<laughs> but one of the things that happened to me is that because I became a great preacher, I never learned how to be a good pastor. So you always got to be humble with whatever gifts that God has given you if that dream is going to come true. Come on, give me the banana, give me the banana. One of the things that I realized is that you will, come on, be humble because, come on, because you will, you won't stay fresh forever. <laughs> Miss Mufumu gave us some, some mangoes. Anybody, anybody bought mangoes? Bought mangoes. Stay with me. I'm, this, and when we bought mangoes, we, we have to eat them quickly. Because if you don't eat them quickly, it will all spoil. So, just like that banana up there, please put it back up, just like that banana up there, if you leave the banana up there, you, you're good, watch this now, you're good freshman year. <laughs> this is you in university without Jesus. You're all right in the second year. The third year, you're not even edible. We make banana, we make banana bread from that. But in the fourth year, you can amount to nothing. I want you to understand that when you leave here, and if you're dreaming the dream that God has given you the dream, you should always stay fresh and humble. Bible tells us, hold on, Bible tells us, because I know you know the story, stay with me. The Bible tells us that Joseph, right now in Genesis chapter 39, the first, the brothers took him and put him in a pit. Are you with me so far? And when they put him in a pit, Reuben tried to save him. Reuben, the brother, tried to save him. And, and I want you to understand that sometimes people will put you in a place where you can't get out of, but it's God catapulting you to another place. When I was in high school, I won't tell you which high school it was, Great New York Academy. Listen closely. <laughs> My parents paid tuition for three children in one school. One brother, principal, came to my family and said to my family, sat down with my mother and father and said, if I were you, I would take your tuition money and I would go on a vacation with it. My two brothers were so bad Man, these guys were terrible. That the principal had to tell my parents that those two other brothers that you have, your sons are so terrible that I would take that tuition money and I would go on a vacation. My father came home that night and said to the three of us, you better make my money work because I'm not raising no fools in here. And I want you to understand that sometimes people would talk you into your pit. They would say things about you. And it's because they see your potential. But I no longer want you to live off of your potential. Potential energy don't work. Positive energy works, not potential energy. You are potentially a good husband, then you divorce. Please, let me give you an example. So, I bought this thing, I, I rented this machine yesterday. It's because I wanted to clean the deck on my house. And when I, when I got the, the um, what do you call it, got the, the pressure, what the, come on. The pressure, the, wa the water pressure, the what, that, come on now. I went and I began looking up YouTube to make sure I'm doing it right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so when I plugged it in, it wouldn't work. Couldn't understand why this thing wouldn't work, because when I left Home Depot, it worked. When I brought it to my sister-in-law's house to use it, it wouldn't work. I'm trying to show off that I can do this thing, and it wouldn't work. And she came outside, she said, looks like it's not working. <laughs> then she's on the phone with my wife, looks like your husband's trying to make this thing work. Now I'm embarrassed. I took it back to Home Depot, and I said, this thing is not working. They plugged it in, pressed it, and guess what? It worked. 
So I went back to find out what's wrong with this thing, took it, I said, <laughs> my bad, probably the plug wasn't working. Took it, plugged it in, and it wouldn't work again. The first mistake was that I expected that when I turned it on, it would just go on. But when I YouTubed it, I found out that it needs pressure before it comes on. We had to attach the water to the mechanism. <laughs> so, so that when the machine felt the pressure from the water, then it will come on. When it began to work, I looked and said, so this can't work without pressure. It's plugged in. It's turned on. But it ain't going to work till it got pressure. When? I put the water on, and I pressed the little thing there, and the water blasted out. I said, look, it's working, because it got pressure. Your dreams won't work without pressure. Won't work without pressure. Some, sometimes you need a little pressure just to make sure your dreams will come true. And here it is, my man is in this pit, under pressure until his cousins came by. Y'all ain't hear me yet. Y'all thought Abraham had a, had a problem? Abraham's child, his children, bought him and sold him. And when the Israelites sold him, they sold him, watch this, to the secret service agent for the president. The Bible says, listen, we're almost done. The Bible says that he became I'm sorry, he was so faithful in his work that he made him the head of his house, Potiphar. Now, I think it's beautiful that a slave can be the head of a house. I think it's beautiful that a slave can be the head of a house. I think it's beautiful that a slave can be the head of a house. Uh, I believe it's beautiful when a slave could be the head of a house. I'm going to make fun of, um, you're the first black pastor here? Are you the first black pastor here? It's, being nice, it's nice when a slave. <laughs> so the Bible says, y'all don't get it, don't worry about it. Y'all rewind it later. Y'all rewind it later. Listen, so at this point, dreams are diverted because of bad decisions. I want you to understand that when you're 17, your hormones work. Say amen. Yeah. Not y'all. Say amen. Yeah. Your hormones work. Say amen. amen. Oh, boy. Y'all want your parents to hear. I see y'all every day. So I'm, so I'm going to tell, listen, I know time is freedom. I'm going to take a commercial on that. For all those who has graduating, graduating, so just say amen. You're graduating. Your parents, parents, I see your kids. They be holding hands with each other. They be cuddling, they be running away from us. We got cameras, we see. <laughs> think you don't think Ms. Thorwood don't know? Ms. Thorwood come and said, you're dating him and you're dating her. How do you know? We got cameras. <laughs> but I want you to understand that she, Potiphar's wife, asked to sleep, listen, to sleep with Joseph day after day. When I read that, it blew my mind day after day. Didn't ask just once. Once is easy. Once is easy. When all these women always come up to me and talk about, I want to be with you. Once is easy. <laughs> but because of what we watch today, our kids become so thirsty. <laughs> and the only way that we've got to be where we need to be and allow our dreams to take place is when we allow the Holy Spirit to stay in our dreams. Let me show you this one. Stay hydrated. Stay with me. Because if you're thirsty enough, you drink anything. 
Let me tell you something. If you're thirsty enough, you will drink anything. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know, I don't know if everyone here is listening, but I want you to understand, don't let someone from the opposite sex divert your dream. Don't let them waste your time. Don't let them waste your money. If they're not interested in you, you're not interested in them. Trust me, if you break up with someone, you'll get over it, they'll get over it. I mean, I mean, you know how many women broke up with me? Never allow your dreams to be railroaded by an inappropriate encounter. Never second guess your dream. Don't be thirsty for someone. Let someone be thirsty for you and tell them, I'm not drinking today. So she says, men, men, listen, men, men, listen, because if you get stopped by police, you're men, listen. It's important to know that she then said, he, he tried to rape me. He tried to rape me. That Hebrew tried to rape me. And, he, and, and the word was believed for her than for him. Guys, hear me out, guys. Guys, hear me out. It's never that important. It's not important. If she says no, it means no. If she says yes, pray. Usually, ladies, when you leave here and you get pregnant, he finishes degree and you're stuck. But I believe that dreams don't work unless you do. Come on now. Stay with me. Dreams don't work unless you do. You got to work that dream. Why? Because even when God takes you to the place you need to be, You've got to remember that you still got to be humble even if they're hating. So if you find haters, help them. If you, if you find haters, help them. If you find naysayers, nurture them. If you find lazy people around you, lift them. Some say they're not my problem, but they are your problem. If they're in your community, they are your problem. And it's, it's so important for you to understand that our dreams work when connected to other dreams. Before we land this plane, uh, um, soapbox time. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily like talking to Miss Lulu because she talks a lot. But she has elevated this music program from the ground to heaven. I don't know why. But... My dream, my dream, I'm, I'm coming down now. My dream is to see Tacoma Academy look good. Please, Lord, let me say it right. There needs to be new risers in that room downstairs. For the, there needs to be a new track. There needs to be a tennis court. There needs to, I got one for y'all. There's supposed to be so many scholarships coming in that parents should have to kill themselves to pay the last bill. I'm dreaming of a day when I will be able to win the lot, to pray to God, and, 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 but this is why God puts people in pits so that when they reach the palace, they can give back. I declare, stay with me, I declare that when Joseph was thrown in jail, he was so faithful in jail that the warden put him in charge of the jail. Everywhere this guy goes, his dream has to be built on success along the way. He didn't just get the diploma, he worked for it. There's nothing wrong with hard work. Y'all not hearing me yet. 
Listen, someone came to me the other day and said, Pastor, how, how do you preach without notes? I'm good. So here we go. <laughs> so this word tells us that at this point, stay with me, stay with me, that at this point, he's in jail. And while he's in jail, uh, um, um, the president gets upset with two of the cabinet members. Any president, any president. And sends them to jail. They, then they had a dream. And the head of the prison, who was also a prisoner, now I want you to understand that the, the head of the prison, who was the prisoner, <laughs> that kills me, went to them and said, why do you look so sad? Which means that if, if he's in prison with other prisoners, he wants to make sure that you're happy in prison. Why do you look so sad? And they told him the story of the dream. When they told him the story of the dream, he goes back and he says, I'm going to tell you the interpretation of it. One of you going to live and the other's going to die. <laughs> you going to live and you going to die. And he told them, the one who gets out, when you go back to the president, tell the president I'm innocent. But sometimes when people are living outside of you, they forget you. One more situation, and then we'll land a plane all the way. You know, my parents are from uh, Jamaica. Um, visiting there, you find in certain rural areas, there's no running water. Wow. Some of y'all Jamaicans were like, don't say that. <laughs> but would you believe that life was better when there were no running water? Would you believe that life was better when you didn't have electricity? Would you believe, some of y'all saying no, but you are more Christians then. How about Mississippi? I used to date this girl in Mississippi. Where's my wife? Long time ago, honey, long time ago, long time ago. And I went to visit in Mississippi, and there were still places that had no electricity. I'm saying to myself, how in the world can people live like that and be happy? And Joseph is saying, how could you be in prison and be unhappy? How could you be in prison and unhappy? Let me tell you what prison is going to be. Prison is going to be that late night hour that you're up studying and your friend knock on the door and you say, I'm studying right now. Uh, um, prison is taking that credit card and spending it. Let me tell you right now, before you go to school, to college, cut up your credit cards. Uh, 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 mm, 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 mm. Some of them are sitting there and they're saying, I can handle a credit card. Yeah, right. I can handle pregnancy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> credit is designed for you so that you will fail before you get out. Some of y'all ain't clapping because you're rich. <laughs> I'm going to be clear. My one advice is, to kill your dream is to get out with debt. I wish I was the man that could come up and tell you, I'll pay all of your school fees. You know that guy, what's his name? Oh, this is Morehouse. I'll pay every one of you, but let me tell you, all I can do is pay attention. <laughs> the Bible says that we have dreamed a dream with no interpretation. And then this is what hits me the most. He says, interpretations belong to God. Stay with me for a second. If you leave here and you don't leave with God, there's something wrong. Interpretations belong to God. And he then tells in the dream that God told him the interpretation of. But one day the president had a dream. Couldn't figure out the dream. And the word tells us that the butler says, I know a man. I know a graduate that can figure this thing out. There's a graduate here that has the answer to AIDS. There's a graduate here that has the answer to MS. There's a graduate here that has, listen, that has the answer to Alzheimer's. There's a graduate here that has the answer, watch this now, to a better tithe system in church. Wow. 
and get fired for that one. So what I want you to know is that you have some answers. And when they brought him in, the word says that he told them how to get ready for famine. You see, the reason why you are here is because God is getting the world ready for a famine, and you're the only ones with the answers. I want to share this before I sit down because my stomach is grumbling, and, and for those who may not know, in graduation weekend, you have five stops to make all with meat platters. God can do anything with your dream. I paused for a little moment, and I said to Anthony, Anthony, stand for a second. I'm almost done. I said it three times, but I almost this time. When he prayed and he came down, I took him to the side. I said, man, you, you hold on to the pulpit like a pastor. He said, don't do that to me. <laughs> I said, man, you, you look like a pastor. He said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. I said, go ahead, and sit, go ahead and sit down. And he quickly ran and sit down, sit down. And he quickly ran and sit down. And, and, and when I look at Anthony's life, Lord have mercy, my God, it is a miracle. It takes a miracle. Anthony is a miracle. Not a miracle baby, a miracle student. And the reason why I bothered him all year long, Mr. Thor, you know why I bothered him all year long. He walks into the hallway, where's his dad? Where's his dad? Please, I'm almost done. Where's his dad? Dad, where's dad? Where's dad? Dad, 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 dad. Yeah. I know you're bigger than me, but I do hit him sometimes. Okay. You're good. Oh, the mother went like this. Good, I'm good. <laughs> Sometimes he walks in the hallway and, and I'll, I'll grab him and just, and just shove him, you know. Can't do it with every kid. Sometimes he's walking down the hallway and I just feel like, how come you're not in class? I'm going to class. Well, the bell rang. Where are you? What you looking for? <laughs> Sometimes I'll slap him real hard. Bow, not in the behind, like on the back. And I do it because I see myself. You know what it's like to see the replica of you walking in a high school where the principal tells your parents that you should take the money? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> and s s go on a vacation? It's not just Anthony, there's many others of you that have dreams. Dreams of being what God expects you to be. But the Bible tells us that God can take you next level simply because the dream wasn't birthed from you, it was birthed from Him. When I look at this, I realize that your dreams can only come to fruition if you let God take it to the next level. Behold, look, the dreamers. Behold, the dreamers. When I look at these dreamers, they think differently from us. These millennials think differently. They don't go to church, they watch online. These millennials think different. Whatever they want, they want it now. They don't want it later. These millennials, once they dream a dream, they go for it, and it's either 100% or nothing at all. Even when they do crazy things, they, they go all in. But Joseph decided he was going to stay true to the dream. The Bible tells us that when he figured out the dream, he puts him in the chariot, the limousine, next to Obama's. Oh, wait, there's a new president. Next to Obama's. <laughs> and next to Mr. Trump. He is in the next, listen, he's in the next limousine. Why? Because he's now the ruler of Egypt. Everything he says, Pharaoh listens. Pharaoh says, store the grain. They store the grain. Pharaoh says, go here. The Pharaoh went there. Why? Because he was faithful in the pit. He was faithful in Potiphar's house. He was faithful in the prison. He's faithful in the palace. That's how dreams come to fruition. And I share this with you. Listen, I share this with you to let you know that the dream doesn't belong to anyone else. It belongs to you. Well, I close this off, you know, I, I know it's not my church, Pastor Tap, but by now the Hammond organ will be playing, you know what I mean? And I will simply say that I remember this dream. 
I remember one time when I, I wasn't working. Stay with me. And a man came up to me and he said to me, you will never preach again. I remember it like yesterday. You will never preach again. Then another person told me, you will never pastor again. I laid down and I thought about the dream. The dream that God gave me, not a man. I need you to know that we live on a blue planet that circles around a ball of fire next to a moon that moves the sea, and you don't believe in miracles? Huh? Well, hold on a second. We live in a blue planet that circles around a ball of fire next to a moon that moves the sea, and you don't believe in miracles? I want you to understand that I remember, listen, I remember dreaming of what this will be like. And now I'm going to shut up in this. Listen, so, so years ago, listen, listen, years ago, I visited here. I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm not from Maryland. One day my brother said to me, maybe you can move here. Here? No, oh, man, I dodge dogs, not deer. <laughs> and, and, and I want you to understand that I got a call from WAU at that time, CUC, would like for you to be the chaplain. And I was like, I ain't being no chaplain. I live in New York. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> then Metro Church called, and Metro said, we'd like for you to be the youth, I mean, the youth pastor. And I said, Mm -mm, I ain't leaving New York. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> then Elder Wright, you know Elder Wright. Oh, oh, oh. We want to offer you the opportunity to come to CPC. <laughs> and I told Elder Wright, y'all know Elder Wright. Now, nah. hung up the phone and was like, no, I'm from Brooklyn. God said, I got to take you from Brooklyn to save you. You want that dream to come true? Sometimes you got to move your location. Oh, you want that dream, dream to come true? You got to move from what's comfortable. You want that dream to come true? Sometimes you got to learn a new place. Come on now. You want that dream to come true? Quit that girl. You want that dream to come true? Wake up earlier in the mornings. You want that dream to come true? Study like you never studied before. You want that dream to come true? Turn off the TV. You want that dream to come true? Find a good, a good prayer spot. I want you to understand that if you want your dream to come true, you better listen to God. Behold, dreamers, behold that your dreams won't come to fruition until God is in it. And I could remember coming here, listen, coming here to Maryland. I want you to understand that my daddy said, boy, that ain't no church. Son, that ain't no church. I said, that ain't no church yet. Yet? I spent all this money for school for you to say you don't know where to, you know. I said, let me tell you something, Dad. With God, this thing can happen. And right now, if I weren't obedient to God, I wouldn't be living that dream. When the administration told me, we ain't got no money for you, brother. You got to preach and pastor this church with no money. I need... I said, me? Me? The yellow banana? Me? <laughs> me who preached the way I preached? Me? Me? By that time, my wife was packing up the house. I said, by that time, my wife was packing up the house. She said, we, I've been wanting to move to Maryland a long time. I was like, well, I didn't know. Now she want to move to Maryland. My kids can't talk, amen, at that time. So at that point, I said, God, what do you want me to do? God said, Move and do what I ask you to do for the dreams to come true. I share with you that your haters will say, look at the dreamers, but they're joking. They're laughing. Look at the dreamers. But when you become mature out of college and in college, they will say, look, the dream, the dream has come true. I dream of a better place. Sorry, I dream of a better place. Uh, this is church. I dream of a better place. 
I dream of a place with no shootings, DT. I dream of a place where white and black can worship together. I would, I, I'm sorry, not white and black, everybody. I want you to understand. I dream of a place, I dream of a place where I can run and not get tired. I dream of a place, y'all, that when I eat from the fruit of the tree, I get tall again. I'm trying to tell you, I dream of a place. I dream of a place where the loved ones have gone on long before I can talk to them. I want you to understand, I dream of a place that God talks about, a place where Jesus is. Your dream must be a, a, a place where God is, and one day when Jesus bursts the clouds, you see your dreams come true. My dream is if I'm dead, wake up to life eternal. My dream is to see Jesus face to face. My dream is that when you leave here, you don't leave with a diploma, you leave with eternal life. I want you to understand, behold the dreamers, look at the dreamers, check out the dreamers, check the dreamers, look at the dreamers, behold the dreamers. And I don't know about you, but I'm still dreaming. I'm still dreaming that when I retire in a couple of years, that I'm still preaching because this is my dream. I want my kids to know I'm living my dream. I want my son to know I'm living my dream. I told pastor just before getting up that this is my dream, being here talking on behalf of a Savior that loves me. I'm living my dream. I don't get paid for it, but I'm living my dream. I'm living my dream. And so never give up on your dreams. Listen, never give up your dreams. You, you, you got a hard job? That's the dream of every unemployed. You got a small home? It's a dream of every homeless. Your child is annoying? That's a dream of everyone who can't have a child. Your little money is a dream of every debtor. And your smile is a dream for everyone depressed. So thank God for your situation and hold on to your dreams.